and for our next presentation, I have been joined by Michael Lindstrom, CEO of Aftahem. Welcome, Michael. Thank you so much. Well, as said, I'm Michael Lindstrom, and I'm the CEO of Aftahem. Today, I'm going to go through a little where we are right now with the company, and for you newcomers, give you a little a brief introduction to us, of course, and then an outlook where we are actually heading uh, forwards. So, if we look at Aptahem, our mission is to develop innovative aptamer based drugs focused on life-threatening diseases that have a high un, uh, unmet medical need. And that is very key when it comes to the indication we're working on. Apta-1 is our uh, lead candidate and we are developing towards a critical care drug designed to prevent the damage of organs and tissues that may happen in sepsis or septic shock. And you will soon see that this is not a fun sickness. Well, I just mentioned aptamers in development. And aptamers and aptahem, aptamers themselves, have an open up for new treatments. And what kind of treatments can we think about then? Well, it's treatments that hadn't been uh, possible before. And that is in the nature of aptamers uh, when you build them. And you have a target and you build bit by bit, just like Lego, like you see on the right side. And those bits and pieces are actually real DNA or RNA fragments, just like the Le Lego pieces. And then they can hit the target, as an example in the right uh, down side, uh, where we then build the aptamer around that we have. And the uniqueness of these aptamers is their ability to create totally new pharmaceuticals on very complex targets and before uh, uh, before, I'm reading in, inside here, uh, has not been possible before. That's what I'm going to say. And that's the strength of aptamers. But peace, 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 peace. So you can really tailor around a target. And that's the big advantage of aptamers. They also give high affinity, of course, perfect fit to the target. And they're very specific on the target. And a nice thing to notice about aptamers in general is that they have low or no immunogenicity. And that is important because then, by, by their nature, we can avoid a lot of side effects. And just an example to the size of APTA-1, you see on the lower left, and an antibody. An antibody is a very popular drug uh, uh, to treat uh, different sicknesses with. And you see the size of it, you see the complexity of it, compared to APTA-1. And here you can realize yourself that APTA-1 have reached a target somewhere, which an antibody perhaps wouldn't do. So that's a big strength. How about where we are right now with APTA-1, our lead candidate? Well, we just finished the uh, uh, GMP manufacturing uh, program and the uh, GMP is on its way to Sweden to our CDMO recipe fund that will focus on uh, formulate and package this into the vials used for uh, clinical um, uh, development. The GLP toxology is still waiting for the final reports. We have seen preliminary that there's no side effects or any problems, but we need to have it finalized. It's important for the regulators, of course. We put a lot of effect on the clinical phase one study, uh, and we do a lot of prep preparations on that. And we also have signed a startup agreement with a Dutch uh, clinical uh, CRO called CHDR. And by doing that, we secured a time slot this year to run the clinic and also to enable the finalizing parts of the stu study protocol. And it's quite elaborate, but uh, they are very skilled. And the team, my side, uh, they have come very far. So I hope soon to report uh, a finalized uh, agreement on that side. Well, we are also growing the team. And I just mentioned the team. And we have a lot of very, very good competencies uh, into the company uh, of late. And that's a normal expansion. Uh, expans uh, uh, Expansion, what do you say? Exp expanding, sorry about that. The company uh, to meeting the demands that we have uh, uh, for the clinic and after the clinic, building the company further. So, this is key personnel that we have uh, hired now or taken in as consultants. We do also a lot of preparation for the regulatory. I was just talking about that uh, some minutes ago, and that's very important to get all the facts, results, and demands from the regulatories in from our studies, because there are enormous amount of uh, um, information and results that we have and packaged us in an in a understandable package. And that's what the new team are working on very much. And in general terms for the company, we always work on business development, seeking out for partners. May it be uh, scientific, may it be um, 
um, then partners from pharma, for example. And, and um, we also focus very much now to concluding our scientific results to, together with uh, the collaborators in science that we had and our own results into manuscripts to go out to, to uh, high impact uh, publications. That's a lot of work on that side and I hope to soon, soon, soon report uh, uh, the outcome from this. But it takes time. So in the bottom it says we are steaming towards clinical studies and that's what we are doing. Well, why are we doing this steaming towards clinical? Yes, there is a problem. I just mentioned it. Unmet need, there's no real treatment for sepsis. And here we see 40% in Europe die from getting sepsis or septic shock. That's an enormous amount of people. And it has a lot of burden on society. You can see here 30 billion euros every year struck the society and that's of course the personal suffering, families, work uh, comrades and so forth. And sepsis is an evil uh, syndrome or uh, condition and it's sometimes called the silent killer because it's tough to put the finger on what it is and when it happens it happens very fast. And when it happens uh, from a, an infection that go when the body can't really control the infection it go haywire the whole uh, um, uh, body's immune system and then you have an effect on uh, vital organs and when they start to fail you risk dying or getting severely uh, handicapped for the future. Anyway, as you see on the lower left, sepsis cause more deaths than breast cancer, prostate cancer and AIDS combined. That's not a small figure actually. So with APTA1 we have a solution to the problem. And here's the solution, APTA1. It's a multifunctional drug candidate uh, with a fantastic mechanism of action. And we focus on that on treating sepsis or septic, uh, uh, septic shock. And what's so special with APTA1? Well, it has a unique interaction with thrombin, is a coagulation factor two. Thrombin is the first responder during a, um, an, an inflammatory response in the body. That comes first on spot and trigger the body to do something about it. But by blocking just a small part as you see on the left side here, the heparin bending site with APTA1, you um, uh, reach a very specific modulation or inhibi inhib uh, inhibition of the process that otherwise would be pushed, as you see the, the mechanism here from the neutrophil and platelets and into activation. We uh, stop this uh, uh, possibility uh, uh, for, for occurring and instead we get a reverse reaction or effect at least from an anti-thrombotic and an anti-inflammatory response. So that's, the, that's kind of the basic key of APTA1. And APTA1 only binds into this part. Other uh, anti-thrombotic drugs uh, bind into other places and that will also initiate some side effects sometimes, like bleeding disorders and other things. We have not yet seen this from APTA1. So we have a solution to the problem. What's our value proposition? I just mentioned a few things of them before. It's a multimodal mechanism. It does many things by going into this specific narrow part on the target. And it's a novel uh, mechanism. It's a first in class mechanism, what, what we can see today. And the whole deal is to protect vital organs. Otherwise the patient uh, risks to die. And we have a fast acting drug. It will be an IV and this IV administration goes straight out into the system where it, uh, it's needed. And uh, we also worked a lot with upscaling and, and manufacturing of the drug candidate and we are going step by step all the time and I will mention s some of it uh, in a while here but um, uh, that's a very important part for us and, and uh, you should remember that uh, we have done better and better each time. It's also safe and tolerable where we can see for our toxin safety studies and what's most important, at least for the pharma industry partners that you see on the lower right, is patented technology. Without that, we don't have uh, exclusivity. And we're also talking here about stakeholders. Pharma industry partners are stakeholders, as well as ICU physicians. They stand there at the trauma unit, they need a, a drug to treat someone, and sometimes they don't have anything at hand and they can just see the patient die in front of their eyes. It's awful. And we hope to, be, uh, to, to, uh, to to add something for them to, to do better for those patients. Uh, and for si society, I just mentioned 30 billion and here we see we can make a, a quite big reduction on, on this field. So there's a lot of benefits and a lot of stakeholders here to, to have a potential benefit of APTA1. So money, yes, it's needed. 
and Eco Society and the pharma uh, stakeholders here would like to make money on this if they invest in it. So can they make any money? Yes, this is a, a study from 2020 that shows how many people get, get struck by sepsis in Europe, US and Japan. So if you focus on the lower part uh, uh, tabula, you see here a, we have very moderately put together a tentative cost for each patient. And we, when we calculate, we see we have a multi-billion euro or dollar situation here for a market. And please notice in the lower tabula, the mid section about immunomodulatory drugs. You see one third in Europe, one tenth in US and one fourth in Japan. So they're still not fully covering. Uh, and this is just the process going on in the world. But uh, estimates show us uh, for 2026, uh, 2026, we can see a 50% uh, increase in just this field of uh, type of drugs. So uh, it looks good and maybe APTA1 can be part of, of increasing it even further. We will see. So uh, this one have a battery that works. Yes, and I talked about exclusivity. We have patent. We have two patent families. One is for the free APTA MERS and then we have one from APTA1 to protect its use, the therapeutic use and, and, and uh, how you can apply it. And as you see here, patent family one is already fully granted and we start to get granted states also for patent family two. And if you look up there, up to one, up to two, up to three, we see that we have now concluded the preclinical and safety in talks. Uh, and we focus totally on that. We need to focus that, get it into the clinic and do that. And then perhaps we can look at these other uh, um, assets as well. We have tickled up to two a little, hence we put it inflammation, but at the moment, that is kind of uh, silent uh, for us. It's very interesting, but it's silent anyway. Uh, moving on, we haven't done everything ourselves. And of later the years, we, we have come into a, a situation where we could actually um, um, interest uh, uh, academic partners, which we have done. And here are three of them that we're working with. I will not go in too much about what we do with them, but they have actually contributed in, in very vital terms for the company to, to uh, um, unsolve a lot of mysteries that we had in front of us. And it's been very, very important for us, and especially Urbro that uh, was part of, of uh, uh, identifying the target here. It's fantastic job together with them. And then we have Canada on the right, and that they have worked in different models to prove how good up that one is for different kind of infections. And there they have worked with viruses, and uh, you will soon see some results from that. Uh, and it shows that APTA1 doesn't really care what type of infection it is. It cares about the effects that the infection creates, which is a fantastic feature and more or less ideal for, for a septic condition, of course, um, as we can see it. Anyway, so if we move on, if this wants to move on, I just want to show you the complexity of a hemostasis, a hemos, a hemostasis, a hemostasis system here. And it's very, uh, very complex and, and a lot of things can go wrong and happen there and body have an ability to react. Notice the red ring in the middle, thrombin, this is where we act. And this is the first responder said, and APTA1 takes this out. It's important feature uh, for, for the specific uh, ac action of APTA1. We should remember that the activation of platelets, as you see to the left, is still activated by other mechanisms, but not in an abundance what thrombin would have done. And this is uh, part of the secret sauce recipe here. So if we go on to what we've done in uh, Toronto, well, this is preliminary results, but um, we are now currently trying to put them together, the final report and prepare manuscript for, for uh, uh, publication. But what we can see here, we can even lower viruses from this study in the acute lung injury model. It's a lung model, remember, it's a coronavirus model. Very interesting. Less tendency of hemolysis, that means uh, affecting the blood system and coagulation. Uh, we see more blood volume. It's critical to have good blood vol volume and pressure because that gives oxygen. If your kidneys or lungs doesn't get enough oxygen, they will start to die. So this is key. We also see lower levels of, both, uh, of cytokines in both the tissue of the lung as well as in the serum, I mean, I mean in the blood. And that's important. And there we have the results for liver and kidney. We see better uh, functions of them as well. And last but not least, less lung injury. And this preliminary shows that the tissue of the lung looks better with APTA1. And we just have to come back on that. So the team behind the company, not everyone, but there are some new key players in the company. Fantastic team to work with. Makes every day fantastic, a joyful time 
to move this project forwards. And um, then we go to the last slide before we will round off fully here. This is an outlook what's happening here now. And look to the left. We preparation. Uh, we prepare now for phase one. This is big effort, partnering all the time and scientific presence. That means we're looking at publications, collaboration scientifically, and also looking out for key opinion leaders to support our, our um, mission towards market with this fantastic uh, candidate. And also have a look at the graph there. It's just tentative what we are doing now, but we hope to inject uh, uh, later this year our first healthy individuals. And the big deal boxes there are kind of an inflection points where usually you can trigger a bit more interest when you finalize a study. And that's what we are pushing extra at that point. But we push all the time to find solutions here. And by that, I say thank you so much for the attention. Thank you, Mikkel, for that presentation. Mm -hmm. I would like to ask you what benefits APTA-1 has as an emergency treatment for sepsis compared to antibiotics. Well, antibiotics is against the bacteria. And, and um, we focus to what happens after the infection, uh, as we can see today at least, and the effects uh, if something goes wrong uh, uh, by an infection and the body loses the control. This is where we can see we come in. Uh, I wouldn't say we are a competitor to, to antibiotics, but in, in the present world we live in, we see uh, a lot of problems with antibiotics. They may not work or something like that. So. So uh, I think we are on a good way with this uh, candidate. And, and when they treat people, sepsis is about 60% that get bacteria. Uh, the rest is uh, either virus or either fungi or something else that triggers it. So antibiotics doesn't help all the time against sepsis. And that means that um, um, if you give antibiotics, you may also give anti-inflammatory. You have to give drugs that increase the blood pressure to keep the patient in vital uh, state and so forth. So that's a lot of other things combined there. And you mentioned here the coronavirus lung module and the encouraging results that you've uh, obtained there. How would you say that you view the candidate's potential in uh, indications beyond sepsis? Well, yeah, I, 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 can, I can quote uh, the professor that we are collaborating with in Toronto. Uh, just a few days ago, I spoke with him uh, and he told me, hey, Michael, you know, uh, uh, when we look at this now, we see that the, the, those people that actually passed or died in, in Corona, about 80% of them got in septic conditions before they passed. So, and, and you can see that you can have sepsis just from a, p a pneumonia if you don't care, uh, take care of it enough. So that may answer the question, <laughs> I think so. I'm not saying it will be like that, but you know, it, you know, it could be. And then finally, you, you are heading towards clinical studies. What, what work remains to be done before it can start? Well, as I just said here in the presentation, we are now focused on a lot of putting together the, the regulatory package. It's a lot of things to do. And of course, we also have massive preclinical results that need to be packaged in the right way to write the investigation brochure, as you say, where you describe the candidate and through toxic and, and results, what he's doing. And so that's a lot of things to be done. And of course, we are now also looking at uh, packaging the drug. Uh, it's come quite a bit on the way. And, and now the GMP production uh, are on its way to uh, Recifarm in, in, in Stockholm to take care of that. So um, that needs to be packaged. Uh, we need to uh, uh, um, seal the, the study protocol, the rationale for that one. And it's on the way all the time. And then we move forwards with the regulators and talk to them, of course. So, but that's, that's quite some job to, 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 uh, to, to perform still, I mean, no. but we're positive and we, we're sticking to the timeline as we see it. So, so yeah, happy, happy smiles so far. Well, we look forward to, to hearing more from you during mm -hmm. the year then and thank you for coming. Okay, thank you so much.